The four-day U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops meeting in Baltimore wrapped up today with executive sessions behind closed doors. The church leaders then headed home. But the biggest news came yesterday with a document on teaching the Holy Eucharist. This document is part of a strategic plan that the uh, bishops have already uh, had approved. Uh, and so this is a document that is reaching out uh, to all Catholics, and we're being consistent with that. The document is entitled The Mystery of the Eucharist in the Life of the Church. It was approved yesterday by a nearly unanimous vote. The meeting is marked the first in-person session by the church leaders in two years. They are scheduled to meet again in June. And joining me now is Dr. Matthew Bunsen, executive editor and Washington bureau chief of EWTN News. Matthew, great to see you. Um, so tell us, what were some of the highlights and the main takeaways from the Bishops' Conference? Well, as you noted, uh, the most important takeaway uh, is relating to what the bishops really had at the top of their agenda, and that was a discussion and action on the Eucharist and the life of the Church, the life of American Catholics. We had the approval of the document on the Eucharist that uh, you just noted, nearly unanimous. It had only eight votes against it, uh, with a couple of abstentions. Uh, but then we also had the bishops moving forward with this plan for a Eucharistic revival. Uh, that's something I know that uh, we're going to have to talk a lot more about over the next three years. But really this focus on the Eucharist, uh, while much anticipated, uh, did not have the fireworks that were also much anticipated, uh, in large measure I think because of the way that this was handled in the discussions behind closed doors on Monday and perhaps even Tuesday afternoon ahead of the vote. So it was uh, a serene debate over the document and I think uh, the bishops should be very pleased with uh, the final result. Matthew, can we talk a little bit more about that, you know, uh, the significance of that vote and what you think or hope will actually result from it? Well, coming in, there were two things uh, that were much discussed. Uh, the first was uh, the need for a document, sort, some sort of a restatement of what the Church teaches and believes about the real presence and the place of the Eucharist in the life of the Church and the life of Catholics and the importance for all of us to be worthy to receive the sacrament. Uh, but then there was also the uh, sort of Sturm und Drang, the, the drama that seemed to accompany so many of the discussions relating to whether or not uh, there was a small group of bishops who were trying to deny President Joe Biden communion. There are discussions in this document about the worthiness to receive the sacrament of the Eucharist. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the, the focus was on catechesis, on a teaching document, not on trying to deprive people of the Eucharist, but helping all of us to be more worthy to receive the Eucharist. And Matthew, another thing I want to talk about um, is the Eucharistic Revival Campaign. Um, you know, what does this exactly entail? We'd been hearing uh, for a while, and it was really launched in June uh, by Bishop uh, Cousins, uh, uh, that we really needed to have a Eucharistic revival in the country. So what he was able to do in his presentation to the bishops yesterday was to lay out sort of what's envisioned for the next three years. Part of it is going to be uh, a training, a helpful a series of exercises uh, for the U.S. Church uh, in the teachings of the Eucharist, as well as sending out priests who can teach even more about the Eucharist. Uh, we're dedicating that first year, uh, sort of placing ourselves under the patronage of Carlo Acutis, uh, the young saintly child from Italy, uh, who did so much to spur interest and love for the Eucharist. And then we're going to proceed to a, a parish level culminating in 2024 with what they hope will be a National Eucharistic Congress that will be held in Indianapolis. So there's a lot ahead of us to talk about and a lot to do. And before I let you go, final thoughts on the conference and what happens from here? Yeah, well, heading into this conference, uh, there was uh, fear, there was discussion about disunity among the bishops. As we saw with the votes, they were able to reach an important consensus, not just on the Eucharistic document, uh, on the teaching document, but also on this Eucharistic revival and moving forward as a conference uh, to many of the challenges that we're facing, including the question of how we're going to grapple with synodality, which is uh, one of those other great pillars of Pope Francis's pontificate over the next couple of years that we're going to be hearing a lot more about as well. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for your time. I always appreciate your analysis. Great to be with you.